Greetings folks, I'm Will Lombardi and I'm here at Plumas Arts Gallery in Quincy, California. And it's my pleasure to interview Margaret Garcia uh, today. We are here uh, primarily to speak about uh, your book, uh, Burn Scars. And I'm very excited about that. Uh, I did a, I took a crash course in, you know, reading it, um, and I've got, as you can see, my pages marked. Uh, but I have to say, it is exceptional, and and I really, I see it as a very important primary document for this landscape for years to come. I mean, you you've captured this thing. Uh, quite beautifully in, in all its sort of agony and ecstasy. Thank you. Uh, but before we do that, I, I suppose many people uh, who have lived here for a while recognize your name. Um, and uh, I mentioned to you before we began filming that I wanted to, to maybe start by talking about all the things you've been uh, you've participated in all the projects that you've had over the years. So where should we? Where did it <laughs> where does start? It begin? Yeah. Um, I was an artist before I moved to Plumas County. I moved here 2000, December 2002, uh, with child, like towards the end. Uh huh. And um, I, I'd done like little zine projects. I'd had a couple articles. Um, published in various places, some poetry. Uh, I worked for the LA Times, I worked for the Chronicle, but... Um, and were you then, in LA or were you in the Bay? I'm from Los Angeles. Uh -huh. um, I went to uh, Cal State Fullerton, so I, I'm from uh, southeastern Los Angeles in the town of Whittier, mm -hmm. um, which is the last town in LA County, and uh, but it has a bit of an identity crisis. That sort of like who are we and, and do we get included in um in where we live or 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 um counted really kind of resonates with me and i think a defining thing in a lot of my work is um setting and geography and that really comes out Man. in burn scars a lot i've noticed yeah <laughs> so wrote it but that's um i grew up a military brat so I lived in West Germany when it was still West Germany. I lived in D.C., in Aberdeen, Maryland, in Augusta, Georgia. And it was, to me, looking back, a great privilege to try to hold on to a sense of self while you are navigating all these new terrains constantly, yeah. every three and a half years. Yeah. And also to think about um, how our geography uh, starts to play into who we are and how we operate and so um that i guess is really important to my work it does though seem that much of your work be it be it writing or i'm thinking of pachuca production these feel like they have social justice components to them right when we're mm -hmm. talking about identity we are talking about inclusion or exclusion. First I'd say just on a, I guess, biographical level, I am an excessively white passing uh, Mexican American and um, that has really shaped me in a lot of ways. My brother is also Mexican American, white father, Mexican mother, uh, but he's a gazillion shades darker than me and we when we have talked about it, talked about people relating to us differently in all the different places we lived uh -huh. um, because of that. I really have that bicultural feeling um, sometimes in the background, sometimes not in the background uh -huh. of, of my work and, and thinking of it in a kind of an expansive way about how we um, kind of it, in the arts as well, 
I don't want to say judge people, but we're like, oh, they're from this background, they do that sort of work, or they do that sort of work, or in rural California, we must do this sort of work, and it must, must always have ranches in it, or whatever, uh -huh. whatever the stereotype is going to be, and, and, you know, in my mind, people are far more complex than that, and, and uh, I, I uh, like to see that come out. And I feel like you are willing, because of that, to write against the grain or mm. to speak out on behalf of difference. Let's remember this. Um, that's probably pretty accurate. And I don't really, I, I, I know a little bit of my personality, where it comes from. Um, I have a cousin right now who's running for city council in Southern California. And one of the things that I think um, is both the greatest thing about the Garcia women <laughs> and probably also our biggest detriment is that we aren't afraid to speak our minds because it's like second nature to us. So I'm thinking about the activist potential of all that and I feel like Pachuca Productions is sort of an outgrowth of that. It is. It was uh, when Tina and I decided to do that, it, it, a lot of it had to do with uh, various factors for us. Um, we both love theater, we like doing community theater, but neither one of us wanted to do Oklahoma or do, I don't know, Sound of Music One More Time or whatever. We wanted to do, in, in our mind, in Starring Pachuca, it was about entertaining ourselves. We wanted to see things that we spent five hours driving to the Bay Area to see, uh -huh. but we wanted to see it here. Yeah. We wanted something where there were still characters of depth regardless of age or background or whatever. So this, I mean, I, I'd like to speak about burn sure. scars now. This, hey, this is beautiful. I, I love, I like the, the image, of course, mm -hmm. is so powerful, but the size of this book, the, the feel of it, this is. So this is, uh, a lot of thanks goes to uh, LA artist, uh, who's one of my best friends, Ross Amador. Them. I took the picture, but uh -huh. he designed the, yeah. the book. Man. Uh, I remember reading Eulogy for Greenville, I guess it, when it was published in Plumas News, mm -hmm. maybe. Everything else is poems. Mm -hmm. You are a poet? Actually, poetry is my first, uh, yeah, that's my, my first genre of writing was poetry, and I tend, I, I, published a lot of poetry over the years, but I tend to look at poetry as my personal, personal, and I don't push it to publish as much as I push other things. Uh -huh. uh, the other thing that struck me about this is you mentioned earlier uh, how, how geography seems to either thematically or uh, what have you be emphasized in your work mm -hmm. and this is geography writ large and yet to my mind it's also a very temporal book so many of the titles are a date mm -hmm. what does it mean to write this poem which to me is a, is a poetic cycle that's telling this larger narrative. It's in chronological order. But what does it mean to, to write this poem and then give it the concrete date? What, mm -hmm. In the context of this book, I guess, perhaps. Um, so the reason I, some of the, some of the poems that have dates on them, I actually wrote after that date, uh -huh. but, um, so they're not May 15th, for example, where this book begins. It's not the first poem I wrote for this. And it was not written on May 15th, but it is memorializing this day. There, so in 2021, um, I have a lot of things etched in my mind in May. Um, there, there was a whole bunch of things I did in May and June, so I, I had my 
It sounds so crass for an artist. I had my Apple Eye calendar, <laughs> but I always put notes on it uh, of what I'm doing that day or what happened or just like a little side thing so I can remember what's going on. But I started remembering how hot it was. And that's a logical starting point because it right? sets up the whole <laughs> fire so cool. season, right? It does. So, so, so I, how should we read this? Poem by poem? Uh, you've obviously positioned these poems very carefully. Yeah. So Burn Scars actually comes out of a larger manuscript where I was like, these poems have nothing to do with these poems and they should not be in the same book. So I separated them out and I didn't have all of them written, but I had probably about two thirds of the poems in Daughterland manuscript became Burn Scars. And I printed them all out, laid them on the floor and thought about what was missing between each one. And so then the last third of the poems were written um, to complete the picture of what hadn't, what was missing. And, and so when we have burn scars, it's, it's not simply poems that didn't belong over here. It is a very uh, deliberately coherent narrative, it, yeah. it seems now. The first poem I wrote in there was actually uh, inventory for insurance, was the first one I wrote for. Um, and it, does that come after? That comes after, right? That's towards... That's after the fire. Yeah. That was, and there's a poem in there called Summertime that I wrote. I was actually day. just flipping through there and it comes fair, fairly yeah. early uh, and it's about beetle kill yeah and becoming vulnerable to these other forces right yeah but the the line that got me was families from the cities who turn on their magic water faucets yeah because it, it, it speaks to me like someone who lives here who mm -hmm. understands what what drought looks like here and we still have people who, who may have no concept of what we in the upper watershed are mm -hmm. facing. Yeah, and that is, that is my great privilege in life to be what I call a bi-regional Californian. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I feel like I have the best and, best and worst of both worlds where I understand how the worlds don't understand each other and um, don't have much to say about the other one but we're this giant state and we need more understanding between the two because... and I, I think this communicates the feel like you've captured it it's so beyond the capacity of people to visualize or understand it's a living history that we're experiencing yeah. right now that other parts of the state unless your town burns down you don't quite get it until it happens to you and god forbid it happened to you that that disbelief, you know, yeah. the, the the I mean, none of us could believe that. Yeah, it, it's and a yet very... all the signs are kind of there when you think of the beetles in the trees. And in the, this. yeah, I I've always as I was writing this book and I, I talked about it to other folks. A lot of the poems in here uh, were written at traffic stops. Um, because uh, for the first couple of months, it went from taking 23 minutes to get between Greenville to Quincy to over an hour. Yeah, yeah, and, or more. Or more for a while there. And so you had, and, and of course, that drive has no cell phone service. So you're in the car. Yeah. And if you're me, you're in the car, you're thinking, and all you have to look at is a burnt out forest yeah. <laughs> as you're sitting here at a traffic stop and you're like... And guys chipping the burned out and, forest. And... You know, just, and it becomes very emotional for, for a lot of us in Indian Valley. Uh, drive down Stamply Lane, the middle of the valley, beyond another checkpoint, flash the pass, your reporter's, your badge, uh, 
as if I'm a big city reporter breaking the big story. I am overwhelmed with story. Is that some of what you're <laughs> describing? Um, I don't think it's ever happened to me at any other time in my life, but it's a very bizarre thing to be in the mode of reporting and being the story at the same time and having to do both parts. And that is really overwhelming if you're trying hard to separate and compartmentalize. I'm yourself. looking at inventory right now. <laughs> the rocking chair, uh, the antiques, the photographs, uh, you know, the 50 or so letters that whispered your love before we could shout. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Is in some way the inventory, what work does that do? Because it's a, it's a list, but it's a poem. <laughs> is um, it, what work is that doing, you know? Um, so, That poem, that poem is one of my favorites in there, but, I mean, because it's the most personal, I think. Um, but it comes off of two very impersonal prompts. And one is um, my husband, who's an analyst, was like, I really need to get a list from you soon for the insurance. Uh, uh -huh. Right. <laughs> No. Right, just the practical just nature. Just the practical the nature, thing. and and I was talking to so many friends and neighbors who were like, you know, I just can't get through writing a list without crying. I can't get through, you know, I can't think of what was in my house and and all that stuff. And so it comes from that, but also with a community literary initiative, we had just done a writing prompt that was. A list poem like what would you write in a list as a poem and it just those two things collided in the same week and that's how that poem came yeah. about is, is that and I was I was thinking too because an insurance company of course does not care about like the 50 letters or right. um, you know your Marlena Dietrich poster <laughs> doesn't care about any of that um, and I was like wow what if you had like some poetic insurance company where you could actually list out the things uh -huh. that mattered and it, it's not your stupid computer or printer it's yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. it's this stuff Margaret, this has been wonderful. Thanks so yeah, much. Thanks for and, asking good and, question. <laughs> uh, the book itself the poems themselves are powerful, uh, and it really is um, a special document for this place and this time. Um, thank you, and I, I really, um, I actually like to encourage anyone to try to remember the time and write, write stuff down, because we will, we will never forget the fire, but we'll start forgetting the little tiny tidbits here and there that I think are important to remember. Yeah. And we won't we won't remember that if we don't write it down. Yeah. Thanks a bunch. Thank you.